Hello, I'm Caroline Knight and I'm a trustee of the Georgian Group and I'm going to talk to you about Carshalton House in Surrey and the very luxurious plunge bath which survives in a beautifully tiled bathroom in that house. I first discovered it when I was researching country houses around London for my book London's Country Houses that came out about 10 years ago and it was one that particularly fascinated me. So I'll show you a picture of the house as it looks today. And we'll go inside it and then to the bathroom. Here we've got a print of the house published by Watts in his book, Views of Seats of 1779. It's a substantial house with large grounds as so many of these houses around London were. You can see a lake and in the distance between the clump of trees, there's a tall building with a tower and that is the water tower where there is this bathroom and also a saloon and an orangery, so a sort of entertaining complex. However, when the house, when the water tower was built, Charles Bridgman laid out a formal canal around 1715, leading from the house to the water tower, so it would have looked very different. And there were fountains also in some parts of the garden. Now, where is Carshalton? This is a simplified map showing you the River Wandle as it flows into the Thames, quite near Putney, so west of central London. You can see Wandsworth, Merton, Sutton, and then right at the bottom, in smaller writing, you can see Carshalton, where the River Wandle divides into two. This water supply is very important for Carshalton House and its bathroom, and is dependent on chalk springs coming from the North Downs. So the Wandle, although now a rather polluted little river, was a very clear and flowing river in the time when Carshalton House was built. And the village still today has two large medieval ponds, which are fed from the River Wandle themselves. It's quite attractive in the centre of the village, although now the area is very built up and joined on to London and Carshalton House is quite close to the centre of the village. Here it is, built in 1696, with details in rubbed red brick and a deep eaves cornice of wood with a rather chunky attic story up above. This attic story was added in the 1750s and when the house was built, it had a high hipped roof with dormer windows and would have looked, I think, much less top heavy. It was built by a, the Arden family, a rich city family, and bought in 1710 by Edward Carlton, who was a tobacco merchant, so also a rich city family. However, he wasn't paying his tobacco duty, and this led to his bankruptcy. So there are records, very useful records, showing that the house was luxuriously furnished with contents valued at £3,000. After he became bankrupt, the house had to be sold and it was bought by Sir John Radcliffe in 1713, who bought the contents with it. So these, this £3,000 uh, value was what he paid for these, these luxurious contents. He died only the next year, leaving his fortune to the University of Oxford and the build, for the building of the Radcliffe camera. And after his death, it was bought by Sir John Fellows, who had 86,000 pounds invested in the South Sea Company, which was to crash disastrously only seven years later. So this house was changing hands like many of these houses around London, really quite often. Now I'll show you one interior, a very beautiful surviving painted room, probably by Robert Robinson, who's known to have painted several rooms. One survives in a school in London and there are some panels from another room in the British galleries in the V&A. So this really is a very special survival. It's a small room on the ground floor quite close to the entrance hall, so probably a study or closet for the owner of the house. And this was probably painted around 1705, so before Fellows bought the house. Here is the water tower, which he commissioned soon after he bought the house, 
from Henry Joynes, who was an architect and clerk of the works to Vanborough at Blenheim Palace. So I think we see some elements of Vanborough style in this building with the big water tower in the center, which has a lead system right up the top up here. And then the tall windows here, which are of the orangery, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, built of brick with rubbed red brick detailing, rather like the main house. Fellows had a conduit built from some of the springs in the North Downs, bringing his own supply of water to this building and a water wheel then pumped it up into the top of the tower from which natural pressure was used to feed it to the bathroom in this building, also to fountains in the gardens and to the house itself. So the house had unusually a very good, clean, clear supply of running water in the early 18th century. Here is the orangery as it looks today, rather utilitarian space, but with its great big arched windows letting in as much sunlight as possible to keep the orange trees warm in winter. And then the sashes could be flung up so you could walk out onto the terrace where orange trees would be placed in the summer. I suspect that rather like Queen Anne's orangery at Kensington Palace, this would have been used as a summer supper room as well. So it's not just a greenhouse for plants, it's also part of this complex of buildings at Carshalton, which would be used to entertain guests. The bathroom itself has wonderful Delft tiles all over the walls. We can still see the black and white tiles on the bottom of the plunge bath, marble steps here leading down into it, and then these beautiful blue and white tiles outlining the architectural features and the lovely soft, slightly greyish look of uh, the plain tiles in between. So this really would have been the last word in luxury. Another view here of the tiles shows you how this room is very high ceiling with a good cornice and also implied architectural features with this dado in the tiles here, lower panels below and tall panels above, just as you might have seen in the house itself and perhaps in the, the uh, orangery and saloon as well. This room was called the Bagno when it was built, so using an Italian term for this rather exotic little building. It was probably completed only about 1720, and the South Sea crash happened uh, the very next year, so Fellows would not have enjoyed it for very long. He was declared bankrupt, but his, he was able to stay in this house because his brother bought it for him and he remained there until his death. Well, the house became a girls' school in the mid 19th century and very large Victorian wings were added. And it is still a girls' school today. The water tower, however, does not belong to the school. It is owned by the Carshalton House Water Tower and Historic Gardens Trust and it's very beautifully looked after, listed grade two and with occasional openings, usually in the summer, Sunday afternoons, there is access. But of course this year with the coronavirus, it's not possible to get in. Hopefully next year, you might be able to visit it. <laughs>